Hi, it's Greg Harrell here with another Vim screencast. And today I want to talk about multiple course curses, uh, or rather, not having multiple curses. So I have never really used Sublime Text, but I've been around enough Sublime users to realize that one of the features that they really love is multiple curses. And having seen them use it, I can I can get the charm of it. Uh, unfortunately, Vim doesn't have an implementation of multiple curses, and uh, there are plugins that try to do it. This is probably the most popular one, Vim Multiple Curses. It's got four and a half thousand stars on GitHub. Looks pretty good, pretty robust. Um, it has links in the README to various other plugins that try to implement the same idea. I actually haven't tried this plugin yet. I might try it one day. Um, I get the sense that it is fairly complex and it's fairly deeply integrated into Vim in order to fake this concept of multiple curses that doesn't exist. Um, and so I'm a little bit wary of the complexity and I also want to make sure that I can use the fundamental tools that already come with Vim uh, to their maximum extent before I start pulling in another piece of fairly complicated infrastructure. Uh, so I'm not happy about multiple cursors. I wish Vim had them, uh, but I also don't necessarily want to install a plugin yet. So in this screencast, I want to show you a couple of techniques for doing the kind of things that you might naturally do with multiple cursors if you had them in your editor. Uh, I don't feel entirely happy with this because it always does feel a little bit like a kludge. Um, instead of having like one mental model, which is like when I want to operate on multiple things at once, I'm going to use multiple courses, curses, you wind up with a much more complicated mental model where you have to pick a tool from a toolkit depending on what kind of job you're doing. And the, the way you do a particular operation will depend on a bunch of different circumstances. Um, so instead of having one technique, you have like 10 or 20 techniques. Um, so I'm going to pick a couple of techniques today and in follow-up screencasts, I'll look at some more techniques um, and show you how I get around the lack of multiple curses in Vim. But yeah, as I said, it is not something that I'm entirely happy with. Um, so today I'm just going to start with the most obvious of all, which is using uh, visual block mode. Uh, visual block mode, which we enter by control V, allows us to do things like uh, move around and create a, a non-contiguous text selection. Um, and so using visual block mode, I can do things like select all of these variables that you have on the screen there and change them to some other word. Um, and it will, the change will be replicated in all the lines. Uh, another common one, for example, would be commenting things out. Uh, so I could, if I didn't have a comment plugin, I could use visual block mode to just insert some text at the start of the line. Uh, of course, I actually do have a comment plugin, and so you know the more natural way to do that would be to use the comment plugin. But regardless, uh, whenever you have an operation that you want to apply on a bunch of consecutive lines that are aligned with each other, visual block mode makes it really easy to do. Uh, it's not so easy when you have a ragged right-hand edge like we do on these lines here. Just say I wanted to add a semicolon to each of these lines. Uh, I have a few options. One is to like just do it manually, uh, which is not necessarily that fun. Um, another is to use visual block mode, but hit dollars and then shift A to append and then semicolon and that will append to the end of each line. Um, another way is to record a macro. So I could just, for example, like the common case is just to hit QQ to record into the Q macro, append to the end of the line, get out of insert mode, go down, hit Q again to stop recording. Now I've got this macro that I can repeat by hitting at Q. Um, and another way is to use substitution. So for that same use case, I could select this range here, um, do a substitute pattern, and basically look for the end of the line and replace it with semicolon and that replace the end of the line. Um, so there's like a bunch of different ways to do that kind of thing. Um, another one is to replace things that are in the middle of a block of text. So you'll see here the word screen. Just say I wanted to replace the word screen everywhere. Um, the way I'm actually doing this, uh, you could of course just write a substitution command yourself like uh, screen and then change it to foo and then run it. Um, you could make this a little bit sh uh, sh shorter by doing control rw which would paste in the word currently under the cursor and then type your foo and replace it. Uh, but this is something I do often enough that I actually wrote some stuff in my vim rc 
to do this using a binding. Um, and I've actually packaged that up as a plugin called Scalpel. As you can see, it's got two stars on GitHub. It has no documentation yet, but it almost doesn't need it because it is so minimal. Effectively, it has one binding, which is leader E, where it pre-populates a search command, uh, like the one you would have constructed by hand. Um, so I could type foo here, and it will allow me to replace all the foos, and it will loop around to the top of the uh, file as well. And I can quit at any time, and I'm done. Um, so I'm just gonna undo those. I think that's where I was, yeah. Um, so the reason I actually bothered making a plugin for this is because by default, if I start on this instance of the word screen here and try to replace it with foo, um, confirming it every step, you'll see that it doesn't start on line 434 where I currently am. It actually jumps to the top of the file, which is super disorienting. So I'm going to go back where I was. If I use scalpel to do this, it knows to start from where I currently am. Um, so I'll do foo again. You notice it started at foo. Um, I'll do a few of these. And then it wrapped around to the top of the file. So it's basically just a bunch of scaffolding around that. And the other thing that it can do, if you know that you only want to do it over a particular scope, is that you can do it in visual selection mode. So just say I know that it's going to be in this block that I care about these things. I can go over here literary and it's, it'll allow me to do the same thing in that range foo 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 and I'm done um, there are some glitches like I ideally would not want it to print that status message at the end so uh, if I do that again I'm going to change all the foos back to screen yes 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 this four substitutions on four lines press enter or type command to continue prompt is completely useless I don't want that uh, but I can't suppress it without suppressing the prompts along the way as well, as far as I can tell. So it's an imperfect solution, but it's currently the best I can do. Uh, so those are some of the techniques I use to live without multiple curses. Uh, I think there's still some more at my sleeve that I can talk about in another screencast. So for now, hope you enjoyed this one and tune in again in the future.